I'm Matthew Whiting, and I'm happy to welcome you to this fourth in the Washington State University, Oregon State University Tree Fruit Extension webinar series. On behalf of my co organizers, Ashley Thompson, who's a tree fruit extension agent with Oregon State University, and Bernadita Salato, who's tree fruit extension specialist with Washington State University. So I'm not sure how many of you have been able to attend our previous three sessions. So this is our fourth one, and this is the uh, virtual Cherry Field Day. We're gonna start with presentations from Dr. Scott Harper on little cherry disease. Good morning, everyone. Hopefully you can see my slides. So this is a quick update on what we've been seeing for little cherry and X disease uh, this year up here in Washington. So if you remember from last year, uh, we had a lot of positives coming out of the winter of last or winter um, across the season last year. So incidents of the X disease phytoplasma, which is the primary cause of the disease that we observe up here, is was hovering at around 38 uh, percent across the state, across all the samples that we collected. So this was, was a lot. So we were headed into 2020 with a lot of latent or residual infection out in the fields out here in Washington. So when we started the survey program this year, what we noticed quite quickly was that the uneven bloom and therefore uneven pollination and some of the freezes early in spring have produced a lot of small fruit this year. It's made sampling and scouting very, very difficult because small fruit by itself is not necessarily diagnostic for this disease. Coupled with this, we saw a lot of late symptom emergence this year. Last year, we didn't. Where so two or three weeks out from harvest, you could clearly see symptoms last year. This year, it was close to, to one week or right on harvest that we really saw clear, distinct symptoms. So this has made scouting a lot more difficult than it um, needed to be this year. And one of the things we observed was that scouting in Chelans, Bentons, and Crystallinas, because of these uh, factors, has been very, very difficult. So it's been hard to scout and say, yes, that's definitely a symptomatic fruit versus an environmental factor. But even with that, through the scouting that my lab's been doing over the past uh, two, three months, we have been seeing two patterns of symptom expression in the fruit. The first is the obvious ones. These are severe, obviously symptomatic fruit, um, showing clear uh, little cherry virus or um, wet X disease phytoplasma symptoms, including the small yellow or pink uh, cherries a lot smaller on the shape and very easy to diagnose. You can say, yes, that's definitely a, a characteristic symptomatic fruit. Now these are characteristic of a second or third year infection. So these were probably infected several years ago. These have probably been symptomatic for a year or two at least, but are still out there in the field. So these ones are easy to identify and when tested are easily positive. But what we've been seeing this year more and more is a lot of um, the picture on around here on the right. This is mild infection, very early infection. It's very easy to miss because often it's only one or two fruit on a cluster that's very small, um, color doesn't develop, flavor doesn't develop, but very, very, very easy to miss because it's often only on one branch or one limb, sometimes even close into the trunk, so very hard to see. Now these are probably uh, new infections, the transmission occurred last year, maybe the year before, but these are new infections. So these, this is the result of that constant accumulation of phytoplasma out there in the field. It's infecting more and more trees. So we're seeing a lot more of these new infections this year than we did last year. So the disease, it, disease cycle is accelerating. So what we're seeing in the field is reflected in the lab results. We're seeing high titer trees, um, high titer results from severely, severely infected symptomatic trees, the so ones that are showing classic symptoms, easy to spot. But we are seeing a lot of these mild trees showing low titer, low levels of phytoplasma. So these are new infections. So this is the disease progression happening right now. This year, we're also seeing more low titer little cherry virus 2 infections, not just phytoplasma. So phytoplasma is continuing to spread throughout the field, but we are starting to see a new second wave potentially of little cherry virus 2 infections. There's a lot of low titer, mildly symptomatic or almost asymptomatic infections of little cherry virus too. So we have to be vigilant. These, this virus is still out there. It's not just the phytoplasma that we have to manage. So really 
the upshot of this is growers really, really, really need to move, remove those symptomatic trees. It might look mild in the first year, you might still be able to get a crop off it, but it isn't going to get any better and it will spread. And the worst thing about this is the conditions this year have been ideal for transmission of at least the phytoplasm by leaf office because we had a short mild winter, a relatively long spring. We saw early emergence of um, a large population of uh, leaf hoppers pop coming out in late May, April, early May. So we had a leaf hopper population ready to go. And this year we saw very fast phytoplasm accumulation. So by late March and certainly early April, we were able to readily detect the phytoplasma out there in some of these trees. Now last year, we couldn't do that until the beginning of June. So this has come up two months earlier than it did last year. So we have the perfect conditions for further spread of this pathogen in the field in Washington because we've got leaf hoppers and we have the phytoplasma right there at the same time. So this year we're going to see a lot more transmission, which means that next year in 2020, we should see a lot more symptoms. So we have to get ahead of this disease by removing those trees. So that's what's been going on this year. That's the basic updates and uh, I guess we'll take any questions later. Thank you.